Sarah Everard went missing on Wednesday 3rd of March 2021 as she walked home to Brixton, South London from the Clapham Junction area after meeting a friend. The marketing account manager spoke to her partner for about 15 minutes while walking home. The call ended at 9.28 and she has not been heard from since. Her phone signal was last picked up near Clarence Avenue between her home and where she had met her friend. Everard was last seen wearing a green rain jacket, navy blue trousers with a white diamond pattern, turquoise and orange trainers, and a white beanie hat. The detective's main suspect in this disappearance is police officer Wayne Cousins. He had been identified as a prime suspect after police investigators trawled CCTV and cameras on London buses for sightings of Miss Everard and discovered that she had got into a white Vauxhall Astra. Checks identified the vehicle as being from a car hire firm in Dover and rented to Cousins using his own name and bank card hours before the abduction. On the 9th of March at approximately 7.45 p.m., three police officers arrived at Cousins' home in Deal and handcuffed him before carrying out an interview. During the interview, the law enforcement officers were aware that Wayne Cousins was to be taken into custody, irrespective of the interview's outcome. Nevertheless, they opted for a strategic approach by withholding this information from him. This approach was implemented to prevent any potential withholding of information and to avoid causing undue alarm or distress to Mr. Cousins. Okay. So we're here to talk to you about Sarah. Let me show you a picture. Do you okay. know Sarah? I don't know. Okay. Sarah went missing. Um, I'll show you some pictures of, of, of her on the day. Okay. Sarah went missing um, on Wednesday. And her parents, obviously, and her family are really worried about her now. It is at this point that we all start to see his breathing shift as he takes deeper breaths, which is a clear sign of a growing degree of anxiety. The inquiry that's been conducted so far has led us to come and speak to you about it and to see what we, what we know about Sarah, OK? So, would you like to... Do you know where Sarah is? No. Right? Okay. Do you know anything about what happened to her? I know that... Um she went missing up in um, London somewhere um, what, what, about a week ago or so, uh, just from what I've got on the news. Okay. Have you ever personally met her? No, not personally met her. Have you had any interactions with her at all? No, uh, why, 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 why would I have personal interactions with her? His stuttering and repeating of the question back to the detectives shows that he's trying to buy himself more time to come up with a believable answer. It's very difficult because I can't go into a lot of the evidence because obviously that would be quite, that's not part of what an urgent interview is, okay? This interview is just about trying to find her. Because sure. she's been missing for a while well, now. I'm sat in handcuffs and we all know her. So you must have something to say that I, I know her. Well, as I said, you've been arrested on suspicion of kidnap. And we believe that you've been involved in her disappearance and taking her away from her family. Okay. An innocent person's answer to a police officer asking them if they know anything about a disappearance would be an immediate no, because they already know they are telling the truth. Wayne, however, gives irrelevant information and almost tells the detectives what they want to hear by saying that he saw this on the news. So, we are trying to find her. Obviously, everybody is very worried about that she's got, you know, parents, she's got a, a you know, she's a sick woman, she's got a girlfriend, it's a lot of people. Care about her. Um, sure. You've seen sure. her on the news that other people that you know, reach out about her. Sure. Out there looking for her every day. And she's missing. And it's our job, our primary job here, is to find her and to try and find her safe and well. Okay. The detective is doing a great job trying to humanise Sarah to her potential murderer. This is an attempt by the officer to check where his emotional settings are. The detective is hoping to see a reaction from Wayne, whether it be guilt or regret. He makes sure to let Wayne know the gravity of the situation. Now, we believe that you know 
know something about where she is and that's why we're here to look for her and to try and find her and that's why we're talking to you now is to try and get you to have a good think about it and you know, tell us anything you can about where we might be able to find her. Okay, um, well, I am in financial um, and I've been lent on by, um, I don't know who they are, they're a, a group, a gang, whatever, um, and they told me why I need to go and pick up girls and give them to them. So, um, I said, it's happening, um, and it then came through that they are going to harm my family, take them away, and they'll use them instead. Um, but at that point I had no option to try and find somebody. So, I don't, um, there's just a couple of names I was told a place to um, take her. That's it. That's all, that is all I know. To this group of people. Tell me about them. I need to find them. Tell me everything you know. That okay. I that you'll help me there find. was a white sprinter van. Um, they um, are it was between sort of Lennon, Maidstone area that I dropped her off. Um, I still don't know. I, I, I don't know. They, they just. I, I just. Um, parked my car up and then the van come up behind me, flashed me, and they all jumped out um, and then they, they, they took this girl. <sighs> Notice how Wayne's speech is suddenly becoming slower as he leaves more and more gaps between sentences. This is a clear sign of deception as he is giving himself more time to think of something on the spot. It's clear to see that he was not prepared for this interview and therefore did not have time to rehearse and come up with his own side of the story. Um, they said, they said, you've done good. And I don't know if my family's going to be all right still. They, they, threatened, they threatened to take my family away from me. So all I know is that it was a roundabout we could try there now, I could show you. But I, 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 roughly, I don't know Lenham, Maidstone area at all. If you um, did it on Google, <coughs> if you did it on Google Maps, like Google uh, Earth, if you drove it, would right. you do it? I drove from Ashford to Maidstone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a roundabout that breaks up, I guess, so this, this is the first big roundabout I've come to. And you would carry straight over to Maidstone, but instead I went round that roundabout and back up another road. Um, and at that point I was flashed and pulled over. Um, guys got out, um, opened my door, opened that door, um, pushed me out against the front of the car took the girl, drove off, that's it. They said we'll be in touch. So I'm here, I'm off work with stress because I'm here to protect my family. I want to be here 24 seven for my family. They come from my family. I've got nothing myself. I've got no choice. I'll go back through the route with you in a minute, all right? But how do they contact you? How did you contact them? I tried to well, one of their cool girls and rip her off. So she's told them and um, they, they, they've got me. So how do they no, but honest, how do they contact you? How how is it they've been in contact with you to make these threats? They just they just tell me be here, be here. So Hotel Burston, down in Folkestone, got be here. Okay, so I turned up. Um, but I've got no mobile number and they have got my mobile number. They have They're obviously outside watching, following. I uh, just honestly How are they telling you to be there? To be there? How is it that they're leaving those directions? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They'll, they'll come outside. So they'll be outside here. Yeah. Wayne claims that because he was struggling financially, he attempted to rip off a prostitute whom he had met at a hotel in Folkestone. 
This resulted in a gang of Romanians going after him for the money, as well as threatening to harm his family, unless he kidnapped a woman and took her to them. This not only seems extremely far-fetched, but his constant shifting of attention as he looks away from the detective who is speaking with him suggests that even at a subconscious level, Wayne himself knows that the detectives are not buying this story. And then they'll say, why are you going to be in Folkestone at this time? Or you're going to be in Ashford at this time? That's it. There's no links, no telephone numbers. I'm completely on my own, but at the same time being threatened. Less than 24 hours after this interview was concluded, human remains were found in Hodes Wood just outside Ashford at around 4.20 on March 10th. That body was later identified through dental records to be Sarah Everard. Wayne Cousins was immediately arrested and put into custody. Wayne Cousins is described as a reserved and private person who kept to himself. During his time in the police force, Cousins was described as a dedicated and professional officer who was highly regarded by his colleagues. He was known for his punctuality and attention to detail. However, there were also reports of disciplinary issues during his time in the police force. He was accused of using excessive force during an arrest in 2015 and received a written warning. He was also investigated in 2020 over allegations of indecent exposure in a fast food restaurant, although he was not charged. Detectives were certain that he was behind this horrific murder, but after an extensive investigation and the gathering of damning CCTV footage, police found out that this case was far more sinister than they initially thought. March 3rd, 4.47 p.m. Having told his family he was working, Cousins drove to Dover, where he left an Enterprise car hire in a Vauxhall Crossland that he had booked on 28th of February. 8 p.m., Cousins buys a pack of 14 hairbands at a Tesco in Kensington, West London. It's believed that they were bought for the purposes of the planned kidnap and rape, whether as restraints or to be used during sex acts. 9.30 p.m., Wayne was seen driving around, in the prosecution's words, hunting for a lone young female to kidnap and rape. At 5.52 p.m., just a few hours earlier, Sarah Everard is seen as she leaves her home in Craster Road, Brixton, to go and see her friend in Clapham. While on her journey for her night out, Sarah stops off at a Sainsbury's store on Brixton Hill at 6 p.m. and is seen talking on the phone as she enters the shop. Security cameras inside the Sainsbury store saw Sarah use a self-checkout aisle to purchase a bottle of wine in preparation for her evening. Just three minutes after entering the Sainsbury store in Brixton Hill, Sarah is seen leaving again to visit a friend in Clapham Junction. Miss Everard left her friend's house at 9.15pm and started her journey back home to Brixton. At 9.28pm, she was walking up Cavendish Road and was seen on a security camera fitted onto the front of a house. She is said to have been in good spirits as she chatted to her boyfriend on the phone while walking briskly along the well-lit A205, which was busy with traffic. Just four minutes after Sarah was seen walking down Cavendish Road towards her home, Cousins' hire car was spotted travelling east and passing the same camera. Cousins pulls up on Poinders Road in Clapham, South London, and stops Everard, he was wearing his police belt containing handcuffs and can be seen producing his warrant card after claiming Sarah had breached COVID restrictions. Just moments later, a couple driving past saw Cousins placing Sarah in handcuffs, leaving her trapped in the back of his car. 11.53pm to 12.57am Analysis shows Cousins' phone used cell sites in the Sibbertswold area which he knew well. He is believed to have raped Everard during this period before returning to Dover after 1am. Although Everard's time of death could not be pinpointed to an exact time, detectives believe she must have been dead around 2.30am when Cousins pulled into a Dover service station and bought drinks. At 8.14am, Cousins went to Costa Coffee in Biggin Street, Dover, where he bought a hot chocolate with coconut milk and a Bakewell tart. As he stood at the till, he fidgeted, wringing his hands. Sixteen minutes later, Cousins returned the Vauxhall hire car to Enterprise, having racked up more than 300 miles in the vehicle. 
From 9.20 a.m. to 9.37 a.m., Cousins, back in his Seat, arrived in Sandwich, Kent, where he disposed of Everard's mobile phone. At 11.05 a.m., Cousins went to a BP petrol station at Whitfield Services, where he bought an empty green petrol can, which he filled with 5.85 litres of petrol, which was later used to burn Everard's body. At 12.40 p.m., the Seat was spotted in Hodes Wood, and a fire was seen in the area, consistent with the location where Cousins burned Everard's body. In the early afternoon on the 5th of March, Cousins called a local vet to make an appointment for his family's French bulldog, saying it was suffering from separation anxiety. He sounded relaxed. Hey, yeah, I was wondering if I could book my um, dog in for the, uh, for the vet so I can have a discussion about her issues, please. Um, she, well, we think she's suffering from, like, separation anxiety. And we have tried absolutely everything we've tried sort of like. An hour later, Cousins bought two 220-litre builder's bags from B&Q in the Honeywood Park Industrial Estate in Dover. 2.50pm to 3.40pm, Cousins is back in Hodes Wood, where he must have moved Everard's body using the bags he had just purchased. Sickeningly, on the morning of March 7th, Cousins took his family, including his children, on a trip to Hodes Wood where he had previously left, burned, and hid Everard's body. Throughout this investigation, detectives notice Wayne displaying a number of concerning personality traits. He is a person who completely lacks empathy, and although they didn't get a motive for the murder, police believe that Wayne Cousins did this for his own pleasure. He has a distorted sense of entitlement, using his position of power as a police officer to carry out his sick plans. Wayne Cousins was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order in September 2021 for the murder of Sarah Everard. His defense had requested a life sentence with a determinate tariff to allow him to become eligible for release on license in his 80s. The judge justified the severity of the punishment by highlighting the fact that Cousins used his position as a police officer to detain Everard. As of now, Cousins is serving his sentence at HM Prison Frankland in County Durham.